All right, guys, let's see how we can solve question 40 from the third chapter of the Merriam textbook. And we have a block that is placed under the head of the claw hammer, as we can see, in order to facilitate the extraction of the nail. And we know a 200 Newton pull on the handle is required to pull the nail. So we're talking about this force. And we need to calculate the tension in the nail and the magnitude of the force exerted on the hammer at point A. So all the reactions in here and also the tension in the nail and the contacting surfaces at A are sufficiently rough to prevent slipping. So no slipping at that point. As always, we're gonna start with the free body diagram of the hammer. Uh, one thing in here is that from the question, we know that this nail in here is actually in tension. So that's the force that is applying from the hammer to the nail. So the force that is applying to the hammer would be uh, the opposite of this force. So we'll be in this direction based on the Newton's law. And we're going to consider two different forces at A, maybe AX, AY. And again, we are drawing the free body diagram for the hammer. And we're going to have the 200 force applying at the handle. So that's pretty much all the forces that we have. And we are in equilibrium. We have three equations, sum of all forces in x equals zero. We can show our x and y in here. We have sum of all forces in y equals zero, and we can find a one moment equation about any points that we want in here. And we can see we have three unknowns. We have three equations. We should be able to find all the unknowns in here. So we have the most unknown at point A. So it makes sense to start with finding the moment about point A. Carrot clock was positive as always. And based on the 2D shortcut that we're discussing here, we can basically try to resolve this force in X and Y component. But one thing that we need to consider in here is that this 200 force is actually perpendicular to this line in here. So for finding the moment, we already have the part of perpendicular distance. So there is no need to resolve this force into X and Y component because it's going to make it harder since we already have the vertical distance from A to the line of action of the force. So the moment of the 200, as we can see, is a clockwise moment. So 200 times the distance would be 200 millimeter. Uh, we don't need to do the unit conversion because it will be canceled out at the end and the moment is also clockwise so we have a negative sign in here and we're going to have the moment of the tension in the nail this is going to be counterclockwise so plus t distance would be again the vertical distance to the line of action which we know is 50 so this will be equal to zero and we can find the tension in the cable you just cancel this out in a four and you're going to get 800 for our t we found the first unknown that question was asking and now we just have to do sum of all forces in x equals zero and in x direction we're going to have the x component of the 200 and since we have this angle 20 degrees this angle here is also 20 degrees based on the trick that we discussed over and over when we have two angles where each side is perpendicular to the other one. So this one to this one, this one to this, these two angles are the same. So that one's 20 degrees. So, so for finding the X component, we're just gonna have 200 cosine of 20 degrees. So 200 cosine of 20 degrees minus AX is equal to zero. So AX would be 200 cosine of 20. Let's just see what we get. 200 cosine of 20. That's going to give us 187.94 Newtons. We did not get a negative sign. So that shows that our assumption at the beginning for AX to the left was correct. So that was the correct direction for AX. And last one, we just have sum of all forces in Y equals zero. Uh, we're going to have the AY. We're going to have T, which is downward minus 800. And the Y component of 200 is also positive. So this will be the X. So 200 cosine of 20 degrees this time plus 200 sine of 20 degrees equals zero. So AY is basically 800 minus 200 sine of 20, which is going to be 731.56 Newtons. Again, no negative sign. That shows our assumption for AY was correct too. And if we just want to find the magnitude of the force at a which is uh, what the question is asking for that 
we simply have the square root of ax squared plus ay squared, which is going to be 187.94 squared plus 731.6 squared. That's going to give us 755.35 newtons. And the final answer for this question. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions and you guys take care. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.